Hello everyone. In this video we'll take a look at how we can use a tool like Gephi uh, to understand how websites actually collect um, user data and share it with the other third-party websites and third-party services, particularly through using cookies or what's popularly called as third-party cookies. Now privacy is a huge concern um, and the uh, fact of the matter being no matter what we do and how much we try to protect ourselves um, we invariably leave these breadcrumbs if you will behind on all our browsing history and uh, it's quite surprising how the web works and we see this intricate uh, details of how websites uh, start sharing details of uh, user visits and user actions uh, with several other third party uh, data collection services. So there are uh, actually quite a few of these browser add-ins that help you visualize um, the the way third-party cookies work. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to see how we can use Gephi uh, to actually see that and visualize that data. Uh, so to accomplish our task today, there's basically four steps. Uh, so uh, one, we need to uh, install a plugin. Uh, it's a free plugin. Uh, it's called HTTP Graph. Um, uh, it, it's a plugin we have to install within Gephi. Again, it doesn't uh, get installed by default, but it's a fairly simple installation. And after that, we need to make some quick um, changes in the browser proxy setting. Um, and then uh, we'll try browsing a few sites, and finally we'll try and do some light analysis of that data. So those are the basic steps involved in this tutorial today. So to get started, um, step one is to, to install um, the plugin. Now uh, keep in mind that um, in the video that you're seeing here, I'm running Gephi from within a virtual machine and uh, the hypervisor that I'm using um, for this particular instance does not allow me to utilize my graphics drivers from my host machine and hence um, you know Gephi, do, Gephi I'm sorry doesn't look at its best in this video uh, because of the virtualization environment um, hopefully that should still be okay alright so uh, the first thing we'll need to do is uh, to install the plugins if you click on tools and plugin uh, you'll find the plugin is actually available under the available plugins options. Uh, however, I've installed it in advance. Uh, but what you will need to do is go to the available plugins, and uh, there you should find an option um, listed under HTTP Graph. So once you've uh, installed it under available plugins, of course, um, Gephi shows it under install plugin, but that should be your first step. It takes about uh, two to three minutes but I've done that in advance so once you're done with that uh, the next step is uh, to update your browser settings um, so um, uh, the reason to do that is if you um, uh, for us to generate the data uh, you'll find that once you install the plugin uh, you should find this option come up here under generate uh, again it doesn't come up by default unless you install the plugin and uh, the, uh, when you run it, you'll notice um, basically it's acting as a proxy service. So any request that uh, you are issuing from your browser needs to go through this proxy so that it uh, can be um, you know, acted upon uh, from within Gephi. So that's the next thing you'll need to do is uh, go to your browser and make those changes. So it's fairly simple. So if um, depending on uh, the browser um, of your choice, so um, let me go to... Oh, yeah, go to preferences uh, in case of Firefox and um, under advanced um, you have an option here to change a proxy setting anyway this is 101 uh, so not getting into the details here but uh, once you make those changes and um, you uh, initiate uh, the service here so you'll notice that behind the scene uh, Gephi is uh, running the plugin and it's uh, trying to listen for any web request that we make so now that uh, we have Gephi running, um, uh, we'll um, browse for a few sites. <coughs> Sorry. So let's uh, let's try some simple examples. So if we go to Google, um, you know, just as a simple example. So if we have opened Google. Uh, you'll notice that behind the scene again, uh, it, it's showing all the various resources, all the web pages and sites that are being uh, called upon. 
Um, again, uh, it doesn't look uh, uh, that great, uh, again, because I'm not utilizing any of the uh, graphics hardware resources uh, because it's a, a, in a VM. All right, so let's uh, let's try some interesting stuff. Uh, so uh, one of the sites I found that captures um, your user details and uses lots and lots of third-party cookies is uh, Business Insider. So let's just open up um, a few pages. And there might be a, a bit of a lag between uh, you opening the page and it um, actually coming up on Gephi. And you'll also notice that uh, because of the additional proxy and uh, the processing needed, the websites may not open as fast as it normally would. Uh, so we'll give it some time. All right, so I've opened, um, actually I've opened just one page, but you can see here that it's actually resulted, <coughs> sorry, in quite a few resources being open. So uh, let's uh, maybe open a few of these. Um, of these links here right so yeah uh, randomly I'm opening a few of these um, and um, just to keep things interesting I'll, pro I'll also open a few other sites like say CNN uh, site and let's say BBC all right and uh, within these sites it might be a good idea just to uh, click on one or two of uh, the news articles and while we're waiting for the pages to load, um, it's quite interesting what's happening here in Gephi. Uh, you can see, um, you know, the graph really start to form. You can start seeing all the the details of how these, um, you know, resources are being called. Um, and uh, uh, the center here looks, um, you know, quite dense here. That's in part because it's uh, pointing to the local host of your proxy. Uh, so you can ignore that. Uh, what's really interesting are uh, all the other um, links that you're seeing opening up here. All right, so we've got uh, BBC opened, and uh, maybe we'll try and open up uh, a few of the articles. So I'll open it in a new tab and open it here. And then CNN. Uh, sorry. Okay. All right. So looks like we have a few few uh, pages that open, and it's uh, again you can see here in Gephi, it's quite interesting all um, the resources that have been pulled up, and we'll we'll let it run for about a few more seconds uh, for all the resources in the various pages to have loaded, and then we'll stop that and. Um, We'll start analyzing the data. So just a quick recap on where we are. Um, so we are done with steps one, two, and finally three. Um, and then the next step is for us to analyze the data. Okay, so I think um, that should do it for now. Uh, again, uh, you can imagine I've only visited five, maybe seven pages so far. And already there's uh, quite a lot of um, you know websites that it's opened up. and. Uh, uh, once I uh, pause this, we'll zoom in and take a look at some of this in more detail. All right, so that should do it. So um, I'm going to stop. Okay, and um, yeah, I'll kill that as well. It might take another uh, couple of seconds before that completely stops. Uh, but um, let's actually look at the data. And yeah, it's uh, keep in mind that not all of this is third-party cookies. Uh, of course, there could be some links to uh, resources um, uh, such as those for images pointing to a CDN, a content delivery network. So again, uh, keep in mind that um, not all of this is going to be third-party cookies. Some could be other resources or uh, you know websites that are pointing to useful resources could be JavaScript files um, outside of third-party cooking and various other web resources. So um, l zooming in uh, again, you'll notice that uh, there's uh, quite a lot of things that has happened. Um, again, your usual suspects of um, Google Analytics you can see here. And um, you know, um, again, a lot of our websites they use social 
sites like uh, Twitter or Facebook for social sharing so you can actually see all of that open up and um, uh, it, it's uh, it's quite interesting quite uh, and many of these are uh, you know quite um, unknown sites um, I, I spend a lot of time looking at a few of these and if you keep browsing for more and more sites you'll find that web of uh, interconnectedness like if you keep uh, for example um, uh, browsing many many sites you'll start finding all uh, you know the sites trying to connect uh, within Gephi alright so let's try and uh, see if we can make it a little more prettier uh, so uh, we can run some uh, few algorithms here so maybe I'll uh, run the page rank I'm just uh, for sake of simplicity I'll keep things uh, at its default uh, just to um, you know provide some very basic um, you know examples here uh, so I want to change the size and Oops. Oh, did I run it? Um, make sure I do that. Okay. Maybe I will just um, keep it to the degree and here the size of the font, um, graph density. Right, just apply that, and uh, maybe we'll we'll try a different uh, algorithm here uh, for the layout, and just spread it out so that it's uh, easier to read, and even the fonts, the labels, I mean, okay. Just space it out a bit uh, so that it's easier to read. All right, so um, we'll stop for now on uh, on the visualization side. But uh, again, um, if you're familiar with Gephi, uh, there's quite a bit you can play around with to um, you know to enhance this visualization. And also, it's quite interesting to uh, look at uh, the raw data um, to actually see. Uh, the various sites um, and the various resources that have been invoked uh, gives us a much clearer idea as to um, how websites, um, you know, they actually share data using third-party cookies. Uh, so hopefully the video was uh, interesting and, um, you know, it gave you food for thought as to how um, websites, um, you know, just uh, giving you a visualization how websites capture information. Alright, more to come uh, for now. Uh, hopefully this video uh, was helpful.